In this video, I will try to analyze the first round of the Penta vs EG match from last season's Pro League Finals. Now, before you turn off because you don't care about Pro League, the things you will be seeing in this video can definitely be applied to your every ranked strats, so you might want to stick around. To set the stage, EG is basically playing the default armory setup that we have seen a million times now, so no surprises there. They've got Mira, Smoke, Jaeger, Bandit and Valkyrie, and they are playing Mira's in Desk and Fountain, with the idea of establishing a crossfire when the enemy team tries to push Fountain. Uh, Canadian is roaming on an intel operator with C4, in this case Valkyrie, and he's trying to get a kill from below while the enemy team is setting up either in office or in CCTV depending on what they are trying to attack. In general there are a lot of different options to get the C4 kill on border, so Pulse and Valkyrie are definitely really strong. And of course they also have holes from above to help Canadian if Penta decides to clear the roamers, which is what they did in the regular season. The interesting thing about Penta's lineup is that they don't have any smokes or ying, which makes it kind of difficult to actually get a plant down, but we're going to see that they won't need it. I picked this round specifically because it is, in my opinion, a textbook example of how to attack armory on border. Penta starts their attack by taking control of CCTV, but since EG doesn't hold it, there's no problem here. The first real obstacle Penta has to face is Bandit, who is Bandit tracking the armory wall. They decide to send Sophia down to destroy the floor right when Termite pulls his charge onto the wall. The important things here are speed and coordination. If, for example, Sophia destroyed the floor 5 seconds too early, Bandit could have continued to play there because he could have sold Valkyrie to challenge Sophia at main door. And now that she has to worry about a Roma, she can't prevent Bandit from, tri from tricking anymore. Right after the breach, Kanto picks off NVK who tried to rotate to Armory, because that's where Penta will attack from. I wouldn't say that dying here is a mistake on NVK's part, but I want to highlight how Penta is playing this attack, so keep this kill in mind. The next one to die is Canadian, who was roaming in customs. Fabian knew that Canadian was downstairs, because that's basically where he always is, and he also knew that Canadian was going for a CCTV C4. So he lurks at the bottom of East stairs and gets a free kill. Immediately after they breach Armory, Pengu rotated to K9, and now we can really see how Penta attacks this bomb site and why they don't need any smokes or ying. In this round, the only thing Penta did was holding angles. Kanto was holding an angle from CC to Armory, Fabian was holding an angle from East stairs towards Customs, Goga was holding an angle through the armor breach, and Pengu was holding an angle from K9. This kind of playstyle creates an immense amount of pressure, and especially Kanto, Goga and Pengu, who are basically denying any kind of rotation in armory. Now you could say, well Pento's only holding angles, just don't move and nothing will happen. The problem with that is that this is not really how Rainbow works, because even though they know that at least three guys on Pento are holding angles, they also have to respect Junus and Fabian, who could be pushing them at any moment. And if you're droned out as a defender and you can't really reposition, then you're not very likely to win a gunfight against, well, anyone. Now, obviously this kind of strat doesn't work every time because Penta won't always get 3 free kills on defenders who are rotating. But again, I picked this round to specifically show how a perfect armory tech might look like. The rest of the round isn't too interesting. Bannett has to make a play because they're 2v5, but he dies, and well, Penta won't lose a 1v5. So that's it for the video. As you can see, this was only some kind of pilot project to see if you guys are interested in Pro League an analysis content. If you are, let me know in the comments and I would also appreciate some feedback on the graphics because I'm not too sure if they're actually helpful. Anyways guys, thanks for watching.